Welcome to our presentation on Tactile Slam, real-time inference of shape and pose from play not pushing. I'd like to thank my co-authors, collaborators, and members of the Robot Perception Lab for their help with this research. We begin by motivating the problem. Perception at the distal end of a robot arm is crucial in unstructured environments. Making sense of these signals is important for both household robots operating in cluttered kitchens and those working with parts in factories. Passive perception may not give us the full picture due to self-occlusion, occlusion from clutter, and visual degradation. Interaction with the environment alleviates these issues. For robots, knowledge of object properties, such as shape and pose, are valuable for downstream tasks. These could be contact-rich manipulation, planning, and even control. Even with the progress in state-of-the-art touch sensing, the underlying inference is still an open question. Humans, however, are remarkably good at locating and inferring object properties with just the sense of touch. As one example, here's me rummaging through the top shelf to find my mug, tracing the boundaries of it until I find a graspable handle. With minimum effort, we can also identify object categories purely through touch. Klatsky in their seminal work blindfolded participants and asked them to interact with household objects. They concluded that global shape is a predominant means for identification. Interaction, however, comes with its own set of problems. Firstly, touch is intrusive. An implementation must infer object models while also accounting for the motion induced by the interaction. And secondly, touch is local. Unlike a camera, we do not get global estimates of an object's pose or its shape. This calls for a principled approach to mapping and localizing these objects. Let's first dig into some prior work in SLAM and object manipulation. Some work assumes exact models of manipulants and solves the pose estimation problem. Other work attempts to reconstruct objects that are static in a scene and focuses on the underlying 3D representations. The intersection of these attempts to both map and localize these objects in specific settings emulating the conventional SLAM problem. Note that the prior work here is illustrative, but not necessarily exhaustive. Let us first consider the localization work. Initial efforts focused on particle-based estimation. However, it was evident that contact interactions cause somewhat of a particle depletion problem. Factor graph-based methods have shown great success in fusing touch and intermittent vision for tabletop problems. And more recently, dense tactile signals have also been interpreted for localizing in the hand and for planar pushing. All these methods consider the situation where you have an accurate pre-computed model of the manipulant. For our work, we borrow ideas from graph-based estimation work, which characterizes the physics and geometry of interactions in a least square setting. Next, we will look at common classifications of object mapping. Point cloud methods have been used to probabilistically fuse 3D inputs. However, these are not robust to noise, cannot represent surfaces or their uncertainties, and requires comprehensive coverage of the objects. Implicit surface representations have been successful in recovering the object's surface through active or passive exploration. Such surface potentials are described by a sign distance function that is typically approximated by a Gaussian process. More recently, geometric learning and shape priors were leveraged to reconstruct objects from vision and touch. We value the expressivity and the generalization power of implicit surface methods and believe that the uncertainty could be crucial for downstream tasks. The challenge, however, is integrating these evolving shape models with a graph-based estimation framework. Finally, we look at some work down the middle. Molin Erdman considered the illustrative case of reconstructing motion and shape of a smooth convex object between planar palms. Strub and others demonstrated the full slam problem for a specific setup, a convex object rolled between dexterous fingers. And finally, you and others recover shape and pose of a planar object from tactile exploration. This is formulated as a batch optimization with a piecewise linear polygonal shape representation. Our work closely relates to this setup, and we consider an incremental version of this 
to be our baseline comparison. We now concretely define our problem formulation. We consider a pusher slider system on a frictional surface. The pusher has a single point force torque sensor and interacts with the object. This generates a stream of contact points, normal reaction measurements, and end effector positions. It follows a contour following scheme where we circumnavigate this object. Our work considers the question, can we estimate both the object's shape and pose from these measurements in real time? We present a general formulation of pure tactile inference in a mature implementation can incorporate additional setting modalities. We make some simplifying assumptions based on the success of prior methods in planar pushing. We assume that all interactions here are quasi-static. We consider the limit surface model, which are the equations that relate contact interactions with frictional forces and moments. We assume that we know the initial pose of the object that we are working with. And we consider all interactions to be planar. We shall now go over the approach. Our approach alternates between mapping and localization steps. We combine a Gaussian process in implicit surface regression with factor graph based optimization. Let us first consider the shape perception module. Unlike polygons, point clouds, and voxel mats, an implicit surface is a non-parametric representation of an object. When represented by a Gaussian process, it is faithful to arbitrary geometries and amenable to probabilistic updates. As seen in the figure, the surface is a zero-level crossing of an object's estimated sine distance function. Given the object's current pose and the accumulation of sense contact and normal reactions, we construct an approximate sine distance function. While the contact points condition the GP on zero STF observations, the normals provide valuable function gradient observations. The standard GP posterior equations give us the distance field, and we can generate the isocontour through a marching cubes algorithm. The equations have been omitted here for brevity. Below, we see a simulated reconstruction of the butter shape from the MIT PUSH dataset. GPs, however, are notoriously slow due to the matrix inversion costs, and this scales with the number of measurements you add of an object. To alleviate this, we spatially cluster our measurements to instead solve smaller local systems with overlapping domains. This gives our implementation lower query time than the standard single GP. Next, we look at the localization module. A factor graph comprises of the variables we wish to optimize for and the factors that constrain them. In prior work, you and others conclude that Gaussian noise is a reasonable assumption for contact interactions. Given that assumption, our inference reduces to a nonlinear least squares problem. For example, given below is a canonical factor graph for a landmark slam problem in mobile robotics. Our factor graph, similar to prior work, combines geometric and physics-based constraints. This includes enforcing quasi-static pushing as our dynamics model, encouraging geometric validity that contact points must lie on an estimated implicit surface, and enforcing non-intersection for a pusher slider when contact is not sensed. These factors are conditioned on the best estimate of the object shape, which we get periodically from the shape perception module. The least squares problem can be solved efficiently with ISAM2 or incremental smoothing and mapping. This incrementally updates previous matrix factorizations with new measurements at each time step. For real-time operation, we employ a fixed lag smoother to optimize for a window of poses while efficiently marginalizing out past states. This results in bounded optimization times and real-time pose and shape estimates at 100 Hz. This back and forth optimization lets us faithfully estimate our shape and pose of planar objects. We now demonstrate our method in a series of experiments. We first evaluate it in simulation using PyBullet. We collect 
50 trials each of three shape models from the MIT PUSH dataset. These are some examples of the contour following trials that we collect. We use a two finger setup and corrupt the measurements with Gaussian noise. And this is done for the rectangular, hexagonal, and ellipse objects. With a circular prior and no initial pose, we can build the shape of the object while also accounting for its pose. The GPIS representation is smooth and generalizes well to arbitrary objects. We compare the Hausdorff distance as a measure of shape reconstruction. This is compared against our benchmark, the incremental version of you and others. While performance is similar for polygons such as a square, a method performs better for smooth and arbitrary shapes, such as the ellipse. <coughs> the root mean square error of the pose estimates tells a similar story between our method and the benchmark. In the real world, we use a single pusher to circumnavigate a square object. This is conducted on a plywood surface with bicon tracking for ground truth. We first observe the results for one such trial. While we recover shape and pose, it is less accurate compared to the simulation results. This is due to the lack of a second pusher and motion model uncertainty. We conduct a second experiment where we periodically add global pose estimates to correct for drift. This can be seen as a proxy for visual tracking in a difficult multimodal task. In that case, we see better shape estimates. Our method here performs better than the baseline in terms of both the shape and the pose error. We notice that with just a few relocalization events, we can achieve far lower shape error, which motivates the use of vision as intermittent sensing. We conclude on some thoughts on the future directions of this work. While our method broadly concerns pure touch, multimodal inference is more practical to solve real world problems. We wish to incorporate vision and solve difficult object estimation tasks in the presence of heavy occlusion. Moving beyond planar pushing, we would like to perform generalized 3D manipulation and leverage the uncertainty estimates our method provides. Finally, we would like to utilize the state-of-the-art in tactile sensing for online mapping of objects through an interaction. Thank you for your time. For further details, please have a look at our publication and the associated project website.